Hey everybody, it's Amber. It is Saturday morning, almost 10 o'clock, about 20 minutes till, so I don't have a whole lot of time to do this video because I'm gonna have people coming for my Saturday morning meeting here in just a little bit, but I did wanna sit down and, <clears throat> excuse me, go over a little bit about what we're going to be talking about in class today. I always, um, my Saturday morning class is a repeat of my Tuesday night class and I do that just to give people more options on when they can come. Um, so whatever fits their schedule, but I tried on Tuesday night to video my class and my class is so interactive that there is no possible way that I could do that and the video make any sense. Um, for privacy reasons, I don't want to film my class members so if it were just me on the video and everybody else talking that would really make very little sense to you so I'm gonna do this I'm just gonna do a sit down every week and just kinda go like do the class here with you guys and so this is going to be both for um, you know pretty much anybody that's long distance that can't come and attend my class here um, so the topic of this week's classes is really um, the emotional aspect of weight loss and it really revolves around emotions that lead you to um, overeating or eating the wrong things or maybe not eating enough. Um, all of these things that create um, an overall atmosphere in our bodies of, you know, where, where we're not healthy anymore. We may be um, gaining weight. We may be you know, thinking, well, the way to lose weight is to stop eating, not really stop eating, but you know, eat less calories. So the thing that clicks in most of our minds is that we just need to um, eat less food. And so a lot of us get meals. But what that really revolves around is an attitude of, you know, not appreciating ourselves and not appreciating our bodies. And that's not good either. And so that's what this week's classes revolved around is, you know, that emotional aspect and being able to deal with that. And there are so many things, the number one thing for me, and this is all based on my experience, you know, um, if you've watched me for any amount of time or you know me personally, I'm a registered nurse, but I'm not, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not, um, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not um, a therapist or anything like that. So when I get on here and I speak to you through my videos and in the classes that I do in person, um, it's from my experience and what has worked for me and what I've seen work in other people. Um, so just take that, you know, for what it's worth. But um, it, in my experience, when it comes to weight loss, um, there there is a huge emotional side to it. And a lot of us have more than one emotional aspect that we're dealing with. You know, you've got the issues, <clears throat> perhaps, I don't know if you've watched the video where I give a little bit of the explanation. Um, and telling you what happened in my childhood. I grew up with a family member who was very negative to me and this person repeatedly called me fat and you know said all these bad things but at the time I was not fat. I did not have a weight problem. I was just um, an early developer as a young girl and um, they couldn't recognize that but I didn't understand these things and at that point in time, I did not have a mother at home who could really, you know, um, buffer that and explain to me, you know, this person has no idea what they're talking about. Um, so their words became my inner voice for myself. And eventually, you know, I really did think that I was fat. I really thought I had a weight problem. And so I developed one. And so I had those things to deal with, you know, insecurity, not loving my body, um, all of that sort of stuff that I internalized. And as I got older, food became, you know, something that was really comforting to me. And so I would eat all the wrong things. Um, still, at this point in my life, I am drawn towards sugar whenever I am upset, mad, stressed, any of those um, sort of negative feelings I instantly want something like a whole box of Krispy Kreme donuts. Um, but see, I can recognize that now, and I didn't recognize that then, and therefore I ended up at 275 pounds. So that's just one example of 
feelings that need to be identified. Um, maybe you're a person who, you know, previously or maybe even, you know, I hope not, but I know a lot of people deal with this, have husbands who are very negative and very demeaning. Um, so that, that would be an issue that you would have to deal with, you know, having your self-esteem just ground into the floor. And then it gets to the point where, you know, maybe food becomes your friend. You're, you're lacking the love from this person that you're supposed to have, but you feel like, you know, food doesn't let you down because you eat and you feel better. And, you know, I understand that, you know, it, it makes sense. But the first thing is to really identify you know all of that the second thing is to determine whether or not you really want to be rid of those things and that's easier said than done I guess it's you know you're thinking why wouldn't I want to be rid of that well the, the point behind that is is that you have to do the work to get rid of those things it's not a magic thing you know you're not gonna snap your fingers and have it gone um, there is work that goes into, you know, identifying those feelings, digging them out, pulling them out by the root. You have to get rid of them by the root. You can't just, you know, I guess, submit over it and think it's going to go away because it's always going to be there. So you have to really determine, are you really willing to do the work that it takes to rid yourself of this mess forever? And that can be a lengthy process. So it's something that you really need to think about because you don't want to jump into that half-heartedly. And if you start and then you stop, you know, the the feelings, the emotions are always going to be there. So it, you really have to determine whether you want to make the change because for me personally, I believe that this has been a big part of me being able to lose 60 pounds because never before have I been able to lose that much. And um, I believe it's going to be a huge part of me keeping it off and not regaining it because what you're doing when you get rid of that stuff is you're creating a new mindset for yourself. And that is the thing that's going to carry you through the rest of your life and, you know, ensure that you keep this healthy body that you've built for yourself. So you really have to determine whether or not you want to do that work, whether you're willing to do that. And then the last thing is... You have to be really willing to um, to work through all of the things that you've identified, and there's there's different ways that you can do this. Um, I know a couple of people who are in counseling or you know seeing a therapist, you know once a week or once a month or whatever the deal may be. That's one way to work through it. Um, if finances prohibit you from being able to seek somebody who has you know the professional background to be able to help you with that then I personally believe that it can be between you and God and you can work through that. Now, you may have a situation in your life that is more serious that you would really benefit from seeing a therapist or a counselor. So depending on what your situation is, I really encourage you to try to find somebody that you can talk to if it is of the magnitude that you need to do that. So just keep that in mind. And then, um, so you, you have to be able to deal with that. And for me, that's how I've done it, you know, through prayer and um, if you have someone in your life who is really a good support for you, who can really listen to you, um, for me, that's my husband. Um, that That's how I've been able to work through these things. But I will tell you that there is something for me that has made it tons easier. And I know other people that it's made it a lot easier too. And that's where if you've seen my videos where I talk about how you know, the success in losing the 60 pounds has been, yeah, on one hand, it's Trim Healthy Mama, but on the other hand, it's been my essential oils. So, you know, honestly, it's it's a huge thing. The uh, There's a part of your brain that's called the amygdala, and that's where, like, your emotional memories are stored. And you reach that, and you're able to, to get into that area through scent, and that's where aromatherapy comes in. And I know when I first read about this, in the first class I took about it, I thought it was really hokey, but it's not, it's not at all. Um, and there are essential oils that you can use to be able to go in there and loosen that mess up so that you can deal with it and pull it out. In my classes, I always diffuse an oil called bergamot and it's the oil of confidence. So it helps you to feel more confident with yourself. Um, and if you think about it like this, when, when you're dealing with these negative things that may have gone on in your life, if you've ever gardened before and you go outside and you need to pull weeds, and let's say it hasn't rained for three weeks, 
it's gonna be really difficult to pull those weeds because the ground is hard and dry like a rock. And so you're gonna go out there to pull those weeds and you're gonna grab a hold of it and it's just gonna break off right there at the soil and the roots are still gonna be in there and the plant's gonna grow again, you know, the weed will grow again. So, um, but if you go out there after it's rained a lot, like here where I live, it's rained every day for the past week. If I were to go out and weed my garden, which I really need to do, I'll be able to pull up all those weeds directly, you know, roots and everything, and it's going to be gone. Um, it's not going to be something that comes back. You know, a new one may come, but the same weed is not going to grow up again. And so essential oils do that. Essential oils are like the rain, and it helps to just soften everything and make it where, when, whether, you know, you're going through prayer or counseling or therapy or whatever, it's easier to get in there and to work through that. Um, and I've just got a couple of examples for you. Um, if you feel unsupported, one oil that you can use for that is birch. If you feel unloved, there's bergamot, and then a blend called <clears throat> breathe can even help with that. Um, if you feel like you've been isolated all your life and you know by yourself and like nobody's on your side, marjoram would be an oil that you could use for that. Um, for fear of, fear of rejection, there are three different oils, lavender, cinnamon, and lime. Um, if you feel like you just wake up every morning and you just dread every day, um, fennel and a blend called Clary Calm could um, help you with that. And then um, to help your body deal with feelings of anxiety, basil, breathe, past tense, and peppermint. Um, and all of those, those oils can help you. And when you're dealing with these emotions, um, and you're using essential oils for those, the way that that works is you're gonna be using those aromatically. So you, if you have a diffuser, you could obviously put the oils in a diffuser, but you don't need fancy equipment to do this. You can just put a drop of oil in the palm of your hands. What I do is I'll rub them together, and then I will just sit and breathe them in for a few minutes. I did this yesterday because I was feeling really stressed. So I will cup uh, my hands over my mouth and nose like that and just breathe in very deeply um, for a couple of minutes. And then, you know, um, you can also apply them to your neck, your chest, um, where you're gonna be able to smell them very easily. Um, and that just, you know, you get that into your system and it goes and it, you know, it starts to work on those emotional memories that are stored in your amygdala. It's, it's really amazing um, and it's worked so well for me and so well for so many of the people that I've introduced to it. So I just really want to encourage you to check that out. Um, I will put in the description box below, I will put the link to my doTERRA website. Um, check that out, but I do encourage you, if you're interested in trying these, um, contact me because I can send you um, some samples if you wanna try those first. I can send those through the mail. But I would like to talk to you about these and um, I don't recommend going online and trying to you know, find the cheapest form of these oils because it's really important to have um, a very high quality oil and that's why I went with doTERRA. And I'm saying this not because you know I want to make any money off of this. Um, when I joined doTERRA, it was not to do it as a business. It was just because I really like the oils. Uh, but then I've seen how much they've done for me personally, especially in this weight loss area and dealing with these emotions that that's why I share it. So, um, but contact me and let me work, you know, with you and figuring out which oils would be, you know, most beneficial for your body and trying. If you want to do samples, we can absolutely do that. Um, but I can also get you the absolute cheapest price anywhere on these. So um, let me know. I'll put my email address and everything in the description box below if you have any questions about it. You know, anyway, I'm rambling. I have to go. I'm going to have people showing up any minute. So I hope you have a great week. And this is just, keep in mind, this is just an introduction. This is part one. When we're going to dig more into this later. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.